Welcome to the beginner level Adobe Audition tutorial. By beginner level, I mean you do not have prior experience with Adobe Audition, and you do not know the basics of audio recording and editing. If you find any of the topics complex or hard to understand, let me know in the comments. I will create a detailed tutorial on those topics. Let's set the goal of this video. After watching this video, you will be comfortable using Audition. Adobe Audition seems to have a complex user interface. But do not worry, once you explore it a little, it will feel natural. You will learn how to record your voice in Adobe Audition following the best practices. Recording your voice in any manner is not good enough for high-quality audio. There are some guidelines to follow, and you will learn them. Then, you will learn how to edit and process those recordings. It does not matter how good your original recording is, it always needs some cleanup and processing to make it better. You will learn the basics of those processing techniques. Finally, you will learn how to get an audio file for distribution from Adobe Audition. You need to follow some settings to get a proper quality audio file. Let's start with exploring the user interface a bit. If you know what is where, you will easily find the things you need. You will become familiar with Audition's user interface. There are two main types of interfaces in Audition, Single Waveform Editor and Multi-Track Editor. As a beginner, you will start with a Single Waveform Editor. If you want to edit multi-people podcasts, or want to add music to your voice recording, you will need the Multi-Track Editor. I will focus on the Waveform Editor first, and then show you how to use the Multi-Track Editor. After opening the Audition, you should see an interface like this. It is the default workspace. If your interface is different, then you may be in another workspace. Workspace means the arrangement of different tools in a particular way. Audition has several workspaces, each suites a different kind of editing. For example, here you can see edit audio to video and radio production. You do not need to think about the workspace at the beginning. In case your interface does not match mine, you have to make sure you are in the default workspace. You can see the complete workspace list from Window, Workspace. Once you get used to Audition's interface, you may find different workspaces suitable for different kinds of tasks. If you somehow make a mess of your user interface, switch back to the default interface. In this beginner-friendly tutorial, we will work in the default workspace. As I said earlier, Audition has two kinds of editors, Single Waveform Editor and Multi-Track Editor. If you click on the Waveform Editor, a new audio file will be created. There are several parameters that you can set for the file. I will get back to it in a moment. Before that, let's check what happens if I click the Multi-Track. You can see a slightly different set of options when I click multi-track. For multi-track, a multi-track session will be created, not a single file like before. You can think a multi-track session like an audition project. A multi-track session is specific to Adobe Audition. It is not a playable audio file. For multi-track session, you have to export an audio file. These are technical things, and I will get into it later. Let's learn how to record your voice in Adobe Audition. You can see a red record button here, and if you press it, the recording will start. However, before recording, you have to make sure you have selected the proper microphone. Beginners often make the mistake of recording with the wrong microphone. You have to make a good habit of checking if the proper microphone is selected. You can do that from the Adobe Audition settings. If you go to the settings, you will see an option for audio hardware. Click on that, and the preference configuration window will pop up. In the pop-up, select the audio hardware on the left. Then, check if the proper microphone is selected for recording. Your microphone should be selected as the default input. If your microphone is not selected as the default input, click on its name, and it will be selected. You will see a list of microphones attached to your computer. If your microphone name does not appear on the list, quit Adobe Audition and reopen. I will use a Samson USB mic for this recording, which is selected as the default input. If you want to use any other microphone, you have to select that from the list. After selecting the default input, you may be interested in the default output. The importance of default output during recording depends on how you are recording. If you're only recording, the default output may not be crucial. The default output is the device used during playback. That means the default output will be used when you are playing your audio in Adobe Audition. However, if you are using live monitoring during recording, the default output is very important. Live monitoring means listening to your audio while you are recording. To keep things simple, I recommend not to use live monitoring during recording. Once you have some experience using Adobe Audition, you can think of live monitoring if your situation demands it. However, the default output is the device will be used as you play the audio after recording. You can see I have selected external headphones, which are the system default. The external headphones also appear on the list and don't have the system default before them. That means I have actually selected system default for the default output. 
If system default is selected as the option, it will change automatically if you change your output from another place. Let me show you what I mean by that. In my sound settings, you can see the external headphones is selected. I will change it to MacBook Pro speakers from here. You can see the default output has now been changed to MacBook Pro speakers. I showed you all these to demonstrate a point. If system default is selected as your input or output, it will automatically change if you change the settings from other places on your computer. To make sure everything is okay, make sure you are seeing the desired name in the default input. Default output can be set anytime. I explicitly set the input and prefer system default as the output. Make sure the correct device is selected for recording and click OK. After selecting the microphone for recording, you have to configure another important thing. It is called the input level or the recording level. A proper recording level is important. A proper recording level can ensure we are getting the best possible audio. At the bottom of the Adobe Audition interface, you will see a meter. Double click inside the meter area and the input monitoring will be active. Before recording, it is good to check that your mic input gain is set properly. You should aim to reach between minus 12 and minus 6 in the meter during the loudest talks. Not all your spoken words need to be in this range, but the loudest one should do. If the loudest peak is in this range, it can be processed easily later. If you record in the specified range, you will have enough headroom for proper post-processing. Your loudness level can be easily adjusted if you record in the recommended range. You may ask, if the volume needs to be increased in the final audio, shouldn't we record our voices at an increased level? Well, things are not as simple as that. The ideal peak level in the final audio is minus 3 dB. Peak means the loudest point of the audio. If you record close to minus 3, you risk accidental clipping or distortion. Because if you record close to minus 3 dB in the meter, you can suddenly reach or cross 0 dB in this meter. If you cross 0 dB, your sound will be distorted because zero is the maximum level on this meter. If your audio level goes beyond zero, audition cannot increase the volume, but audio data will get lost. On the opposite end, if you are not reaching minus 12 dB in the meter, your recording setup may not be correct. You may be too far from the microphone or talking in the wrong direction to the microphone or something like that. In that case, you may have to position the mic differently or increase input gain from your audio interface. You may have to come closer to the mic or talk louder. Recording in the proper range ensures your setup is correct and you will get the best quality recording possible in your situation. So I have selected the desired microphone for recording and my recording level is okay. Now I will create an audio file and record into it. To create an audio file, click on the waveform icon at the top. You have to give the file a name. This file name will be visible inside Audition and you can switch back to different files when you have multiple files. I will get back to this point later. I will give this file name, recording one. There are some other configurations below the file name, and you need to be aware of them. You may not need to change the default values, but still, you should have some idea about these. These things will be referenced over and over while you are submitting your audio to any platform. First, the sample rate. A sample rate of 44.1 kHz is good enough for voice recording. A higher sample rate will take up more space on the hard drive, and oftentimes, it is not necessary. You will not hear any noticeable difference with a higher sample rate. Moreover, your audio devices may not be able to handle or process a very high sample rate. If you do not know precisely why you need a higher sample rate, choose 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. On the other hand, you should not choose a lower sample rate of 32 kHz or more down. With such a lower sample rate, the audio quality may not be that good. So, I will choose a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. The channel should be mono for voiceover. To keep things simple, choose mono for voiceover. If you are recording music, you may need to use stereo. For voice recording, mono is fine, and you can convert mono to a stereo recording later if required. Next comes the bit depth. In some platforms, you will have a particular requirement for file encoding. Please note that file encoding and bit depth are not the same. File encoding is a thing for audio export. For recording, you should use the 32-bit float for bit depth. If you record in 32-bit float, you will get some benefits in post-processing. A 32-bit float recording will distort less than a lower bit depth recording. It has more room to store digital data. After all these things are set correctly, click OK. We are now ready to record the audio. Clicking on the red record button will start recording. To stop recording, press the spacebar or click the stop button. I will let you hear the original recording without any processing. Adobe Audition is the most popular software for voiceover. If you are thinking into getting into voiceover or audiobook narration or podcast or voiceover for content creation, 
you can definitely rely on Adobe Audition. After recording the audio, I got a waveform. This waveform can be edited like a document editor. You can select, copy, paste, and delete the waveform as you do in any text editor. If you want to learn everything required for voice editing in Adobe Audition, I have a step-by-step -step course for you. To edit professional quality voiceover or audiobooks in Adobe Audition, you can enroll in my Adobe Audition course. You will learn professional editing and processing step-by-step. -step. If you are into audiobooks or professional voice acting, this course will help. The course is available on my Patreon page and on my shop. You can purchase the course from Patreon, and I will give you access. You will also find my email on the page to contact me. The course is also available in my shop. I am selling the course in these two places to support more payment options. If you are from US and using Klarna Payments, you can purchase courses from my shop in 4-6 to six month installments. You can enroll from any of the websites, and I will give you access. You will find the link in the description and pinned comment. Let's get back to the tutorial you were watching. After recording the audio, I got a waveform. I can now play the audio to listen to it. You can play the audio from anywhere on the waveform. Click on a place on the waveform, and the playhead will appear. You can see a red vertical line with a blue icon at the top. It is called the playhead. If I press the spacebar or click the play icon, the audio will start playing from there. Adobe Audition is the most popular software for voiceover. If you are thinking into getting into voiceover or audiobook narration or podcast or voiceover for content creation, you can definitely rely on Adobe Audition. I can now start editing and processing the audio or save it first. Saving the audio after recording is always a good idea. The recording will be gone if Adobe Audition crashes or you accidentally turn it off. To save your audio recording, go to the file menu. You can either save it or export it. I will save it, click on save. You can choose a new file name to save, or keep it as it is. I will keep it as it is. You can choose a location where to save the file. I will click on browse. You will find the saved file in the location you choose. Saving a file is as typical as you do with other software. I will actually create a new folder here to save this file. I will name the folder demos. The file format is WAVE by default, and I will keep it the same format. If you do not know it, WAVE is an uncompressed format for audio files. That means your audio data will be as it is even if you transfer the file to another computer. During the editing and processing stage, I recommend saving files in WAVE format. There are some other options to configure, such as sample type and format settings. I am okay with those default settings. There is a checkbox to include markers and other metadata. It is not necessary to keep this box checked. However, if you keep it checked, another file will be created besides the audio file. That file basically contains some information for Adobe Audition. I will show you in a moment. I will keep it as it is, and click OK to save the file. The audio recording is now saved, and we can be sure about that by checking the folder. I will go to the location where I saved the file. You can see the recording one way file here. Besides this, you can see the PKF file. It is an extra file containing the metadata. If you need to send the audio file to someone else, only send the WAV file. You do not need to do anything with the PKF file. It is for Adobe Audition only. We have now completed a circle from recording the audio to saving a file on the computer. However, our work has not yet been completed. The audio quality can be improved through some processing. I also recorded the audio in a non-ideal environment, so it contains quite a loud hissing noise. We have to try to reduce it and improve the overall audio quality. In part 2 of this tutorial, I will show you how to do that. You will find the part 2 link in the description. If you want to learn everything required for voice editing in Adobe Audition, I have a step-by-step -step course for you. To edit professional quality voiceover or audiobooks in Adobe Audition, you can enroll in my Adobe Audition course. You will learn professional editing and processing step-by-step. -step. If you are into audiobooks or professional voice acting, this course will help. The course is available on my Patreon page and on my shop. You can purchase the course from Patreon, and I will give you access. You will also find my email on the page to contact me. The course is also available in my shop. I am selling the course in these two places to support more payment options. If you are from US and using Klarna Payments, you can purchase courses from my shop in 4-6 to six month installments. You can enroll from any of the websites, and I will give you access. You will find the link in the description and pinned comment.